thought about the Euroland, and especially what I presented yesterday, which I think is one of the ways for EG to avoid becoming irrelevant or to explode in one year and or two years' time, which is the separation, the creation of two different networks within EG, one being made for Euroland students, Euroland being seen as Euroland the way it will be in two, three, four years' time, so basically EU 25, 26 countries, uh, minus UK, maybe minus Sweden, and uh, the other one being made of the other countries. Uh, the first one that was made, found to be called uh, Use, United Student uh, of Euroland, the other one, Values Network, uh, European Values Network. And I want to make something clear. I will not define Europe. And I don't think we can define Europe inside it. And the point is not to define who is European, who is not European. My point is about political entities. My point is about levies and ability to have an impact on the way things are organized. What is true right now, and at least since two years I've been extremely strongly in the news and in the making, is that we have seen emerging new political entity called the Eurozone, which I prefer to call Euroland, because it's really a kind of semi-state, which is appearing extremely fast. And this Euroland has been uh, basically uh, doing something which was stopped for about 20 years' time, which is a strong, fast integration process affecting uh, the, uh, the core of the European Union and the core of continental uh, European Union. Integration is a matter of budgets, of finances, of debt, with direct implication in terms of social issues, economic issues, jobs, uh, unemployment, and so on. And this is the trend, so it's not finished. In 18 months' time, the integration process has been extremely strong. Basically, there has been more integration within Euroland in 18 months than it has been in the past 10 or 15 years. And the process is going on. So we can foresee very easily, complicate very easily, that in a matter of two or three years' time, this will definitely be a state. A state with a democratic issue, as I said yesterday, and a state without citizens able to have a big say on the way it is organized. But that we can talk about. And this is creating, of course, a divide. <coughs> a divide which is going to be stronger and stronger. A divide that you can just feel as EG members just by going around in this university or in any university in Euroland. Today, the young people are moving around what? Around the idea of, say, the uh, in indignados and all these movements of young people trying to uh, refuse the way austerity is put on their back and the baby boomers are trying to protect their pensions and sacrificing, sacrificing education and other things. You can find it in the Pirate Party, emerging in, especially strongly in Germany right now, but with already branches in many countries, which is trying to use the internet to try to put transparency and democracy at the core of the European project. These are the trends, these are the movements that are making the news, and when people think Europe and young people, they tend to think of this kind of initiative now, not a vision. There was a time when young people in Europe was meaning vision. The question, therefore, is how can EG come back to be on the front line? To be one of these movements that media, politicians, decision makers think of when they think Europe and young people. And the proposal I made yesterday, or the analysis I made yesterday, is exactly made to serve that objective. <coughs> right now, to be without borders means to be without, be being without identity. The fact that yesterday's, yesterday nobody almost was able to answer basal question about uh, why EG was existing. The fact that if I ask you to tell me in one sentence what is EG about? I ask you, by the way, what is EG about? One answer. 
but cultural exchange can be with anybody, with the Japanese, with the American, with with the Indian, with the European culture. So European cultural exchange. That's what we say. Any other definition? I would say it would be like active citizenship. Active citizenship. In Europe. Okay. Any other definition? So what does European mean? <coughs> what does European mean? I've told before. For me, at least, Europe is a civilization cultural concept. It means it is not an operational concept. What is existing in terms of operational, in terms of practice, are political entities, economical entities that you can define. Europe is something which has no clear <coughs> definition in itself. It's a cultural, large uh, dimension. And you can be European without belonging to any existing European political or economical structure. But what you say is, is, is clearly very important because it means that your two definitions, European cultural exchange or European citizenship, doesn't give any definition of who and where and how. Because Europe has no border, has no limit. And again, we fall on the same story. Sorry to repeat it, but it's a fact. If you don't know where you start, if you don't know where you stand for, you cannot exist in the eyes of anybody. So, if I go along your remark, Europe needs to be more defined. The concept of Europe doesn't help you to have any practical definition of what you stand for. It's too vague, too general. So what's left? It can be cultural exchange, it can be active citizenship, but Europe is too vague concept to define exactly where and how you are going to operate that, because the conditions are very different. If we define Europe on a large scale, what are the fact of being active citizenship? What are the active citizenship issues right now in Ukraine, in France, in Ireland, in Italy, in Turkey, in Russia, in Poland? Are they the same? There's actually lots of them. If, if you look at student, student issues, really, it's just exploding. In the Ukraine, as who had a drama finding a local association that is based on democratic values. We do study visits, we do revisits. You learn and you all know that kind of, you know, how much is corruption going on. And these are all issues, like corruption is awful for, for youngsters, for people who just want to get into jobs, and there is none. Because it's just cousins getting getting it, uh, and and there's countries where this isn't the case, and I I think there's there's really a lot to do. Yeah, lot to I talk about uh, to, to talk about and, and to do. I don't deny it. there is a lot to do everywhere. But the point is how to make it efficient. How to make it efficiently, meaning that how to have an impact on things. How to make to be sure that what you are going to address as issues may change because the, the way you do it will definitely have an impact on the media, on the governing bodies, on the way people look at the issue on a larger scale. And the point is like right now, when you look at EJ's project, or the way EJ is moving, and, and deciding this project and so on. You have big difficulties, as far as I've been able to see, to define strong project, big project, attractive project, not from inside of Asia, from the outside of Asia, which are at the same time motivating within the Euroland and outside the Euroland, or if you prefer within the EU and outside the EU. Why? Because as you mentioned with Ukraine, for instance, uh, Questions. They are not the same in many other countries, especially on the Orient side. And therefore, what I've been saying yesterday, 
is not to say that there are not a lot of things in common, that people should not be cooperating on the contrary. But to say maybe it's time to look at a way to cooperate, which will be different in order to strengthen the two sides of Europe. And not, not only to try to find common grounds and common ground at minima on projects which are going to be the minimum on which everybody can agree, which very often integrates cultural exchange, having fun, talking and discussing together, and cool points. How do you, this is something which is very funny because it looks like I've been addressing a taboo yesterday. I felt like I was in a church and I was saying suddenly that God doesn't exist. And I said, people like, oh, God doesn't exist, shit. And uh, so you have the believers say, well, of course God does exist. This guy is an asshole. Uh, he doesn't know what he's speaking about. And others saying, well, uh, I was thinking for quite a while that God maybe is not existing anymore, but uh, I was afraid to be put, uh, um, uh, to be killed by the Spanish Inquisition, or any kind of Inquisition, by the way, not only the Spanish one. Uh, and uh, I was really feeling like this. And the fact that you, I see faces saying, well, we don't disagree, we disagree, but we don't get to talk about it plainly in the, in the open and so on. It's, it's really like uh, the same feeling. One thing is a fact, and again, I'm trying to put the facts in the middle. Compared to three, four years or five years ago, something has changed in Europe. And the fact what has changed is the fact that there is something which has started again, which was stopped for 20 years, and I, and we, I can explain why it was stopped for 20 years, which is a strong and fast integration process within the original, uh, uh, the core original countries who built the European project. And this process is sidelining everything else, including the enlargement. As a movement, as an organization, you need support to get visibility. You need money. You need patronage from top high-ranking people. You need top guys coming to your conferences, prime ministers, ministers, whatever, and so on, to give them visibility and to build. And you need to attract new members constantly. And you will not be able to do that, and you are not right now able to do that for most of what I said on high visibility and so on, if you don't address the, the, the reality, the evolution, the trends which are currently taking place. In many ways, not only it's about God not existing anymore, but it's all about the past, the present, which is in fact the past. EG's strategy towards a borderless uh, uh, network expanding without limits is an ideology or vision of the 90s, mid 90s, early 2000s. We are living in 2012. And this situation has changed. You may decide that you don't care you want to keep your little uh, framework because you find it comfortable, cozy, because you like it this way. That's fair. That's your right, your choice. But don't expect the rest of the world, or the rest of Europe, decision makers, media, and so on, to pay attention to 